I was just enjoying experimenting with a joyful song. It's exceptional to have a melody start on the highest pitch of the song. But George Frederick Handel knew what he was doing. By using this highest note, we immediately feel the joy. Plus, for Handel, coming down to the bottom of the scale, pictures Christ coming to earth. You can sing the words or sing it by syllable. Let's try it in a comfortable key. C. On a scale run, steps seven and six are often either not harmonized at all or a four chord is used. Here we are just going to keep the one chord. Notice how so the fifth step is emphasized. He also uses it to start the second phrase in his drive toward the highest note. All to emphasize the word king. Notice that going up, steps six and seven are both important, so they are harmonized. We're going to play this now. <clears throat> it's quite easy in the key of E. <clears throat> we'll just play the melody in the key of E. Now, it's frequently written in E flat. So let's try that. Since we haven't been using this key, We'll just play the melody starting with the third finger. I assume you know that whenever the right hand plays scales, the B flat key is always played with the fourth finger. Why don't we try the chords with it? <laughs> Let's do it again. This time where it's written here in the key of D. If you do the rest of the song, be careful on the ending. Don't you like the way Handel has us jump an octave on the word heaven? But the next note is often missed when people try to play this by ear because he doesn't come straight down the scale. He skips from Do to La. Now let's spice up the left hand a bit. This is for those who want to be a little bit more innovative. We're hitting the root of the four chord, then the root of the one chord, then running the five chord arpeggio. Now let's do it in C. Is another Christmas carol. This one is easier yet. 
It's quite unusual in that it puts only so and do, only the fifth step and the keynote on the big beats. It's one song that you could play with only the one chord until you get to the chorus, but that would get pretty monotonous. So let's use the four chord for the peaks of the melodic line. do it in C. Here is one of the favorite old hymns. There are quite a few hymns that use a, a duet in the top voices. If this works okay with you, you might want to add some chords. First, let's just do it as written in the key of C. Let's do it in D, a step up. This would be good to check out your scale familiarity in some of the other keys. Let's try B flat. Now, how about putting some chords with it? Why not try open fifth? Just the one and the four chords and the five at the end. With a duet line, we don't need the full chords. Let's do it in C as written. <clears throat> Sorry that it doesn't end on the keynote. Now we have a beautiful English round. And this time we have the entire piece. It is especially nice if two voices are singing the syllables in a round. The second voice starts after the first phrase is completed. in D. Why 
why not try it in E? Now let's see how we can add some chords to this. Starting with a one chord is a no-brainer. <clears throat> But what chord is implied at the blue star, at the orange pentagon, at the red headphones? You can use either a one or a five. Just be sure you have the one chord on either side of it. Let's try it in D. Did you catch that I played a different chord at the Pentagon? We'll try it again the way it's written. Now, here's another possibility. This time, we're going to play a chord on every beat in the measure. The result will sound over-harmonized to some ears. At least it's a good place to see how comfortable you are with chord changes. In C, as it's written, Now in D. Remember, if it feels awkward, the way to increase your comfort zone is to practice.